Hello, and welcome to an episode of the Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night question and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, we are answering the very important question of what's in this box. I'd like to welcome you to our Cardboard Coat Check. That's our silly name for our unboxing videos. Tonight, I am going to be unboxing Imhotep, Builder of Egypt, from Cosmos Games. Uh, Cosmos Games was cool enough to provide a review copy of this game, so this was provided by Cosmos. There was no other form of compensation received. You're going to get to see my thoughts live as I open this game. I have not played this before. I have not read it before. I've seen images online, but I haven't actually checked out the components. I have heard it is a very good gateway level game, and I've been really curious to check it out. Uh, so I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Normally I'm answering your gaming and game night questions. You can send questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Think of us as a dear Abbey for gamers. You can find answers to those questions at our website, tabletopbellhop.com, or on our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your usual podcast or Apple Podcasts, etc. Uh, I think we're just going to get right to Imhotep. Make sure before you leave, you hit the follow or subscribe button, depending on where you're watching this video right now. So first of all, this did win a Parents Choice Gold Award. So we got a nice shiny symbol on here. This is again from Cosmos Games. It is Imhotep Builder of Egypt for two to four players, age 10 and up. Playtime about 40 minutes. It's rated five, four out of five on strategy, which I like. It is rated two out of five on luck. Again, I'm a fan. I'm a Euro fan. Uh, block placement five, and then something literally written in Egyptian. It is ranked five out of five in whatever that is in Egyptian. Nice touch. Easter egg. Cool. Dig it. Imhotep, the legendary architect of Egyptian monuments. His awe-inspiring structures and brutal tactics earned him divine status among ancient Egyptians. Can you match his ruthless determination to build the most revered monuments? To do this, you will need to transport stone blocks on ships from your quarry to different construction sites. But you alone do not choose where the ships go. Your opponents have monumental plans of their own and want to prevent your success. A fierce competition for the precious stone resources plays out. Only with the right strategy and a little luck can you succeed. It already sounds a bit like Zularetto. So we're going to take a look at what's inside this box. The game sounds good to me so far. Uh, this game is by Phil Walker Harding. So we're going to turn this around. So we have the rule book on top. And we're right away into punch boards. So we're going to put the rule book aside. Or is that a board? Yep, yeah, those are punch boards. Already come apart. So I got to say they're well punched. I will try to show the other side of this. And yep, yeah, stuff's falling out everywhere because it's so well punched. So well cut. So that's always a bonus, to be honest. I dig that. So we have some boards with notches on them. They are two-sided. It says market A and market B. So there's obviously some form of variable setup or something that's going to change partway through. Um, we have temple A and temple B. So again, we have A and B sides. Art's very nice. I dig it. It's, it's thematic, right? It fits. It looks good. We have another. We have the obelisk here. This looks like one of the things you could build. Every, again, everything's two-sided. We have one more punch board here with most of it on it, including all the boats. Yeah, wow, this stuff's just falling off the screw. We have a score track. Of course, it's going to be the winner is the person with the most points. And we have the burial chamber. And again, A and B side. Same deal as before. A rather unique box insert that I got to guess is probably just for looks. I guess it works. Personally, I'd rather have places to put all these. If these cards are going to fall everywhere. Cosmos. Come on. Like, yeah, it looks pretty, but who cares? You're charging me money for this shiny insert. Instead, give me somewhere to put the cards, please. All right. Lots of cubes. Like, lots of cubes. And, man, these are big. I had no idea. Looking at pictures of this game online, I assumed these were going to be, like, normal, standard uh, Euro game resource cubes. No, these are big. These are, what, I'd say about half an inch cubes. The white cubes. And gray cubes, significant size. Like that, that's, those are hefty cubes. Like not hefty, heavy. Hefty is in chunky, big. Ton of white and black, white and gray cubes. And then, extra bonus bag. That's kind of nice. Black and reddish cubes. So 
again. Black. And red. Nice. Nice components. I'm impressed. I'm impressed by the size of those. I thought they are going to be those little tiny cubes. I got some chubby fingers here. Big cubes is nice. Uh, some baggies. Always a bonus. Thank you for including baggies. Give me baggies, but still nowhere to put the cards. I'm going to put them in the baggies so they don't go everywhere. And then we have the pyramids, which is another one of the tiles. We are going to take a look at what these cards are. They do have a uh, quick open thing or whatever you want to call it, the cigarette pack style. But I'm just going to use my exacto because I hate trying to fiddle with those things, trying to find the right spot to pull. Are these all the same? No. So we have a bunch of different things. So we're going to go through these quick. I'm going to make some piles here. Tiny cards. Fairly thick. Um, not glossy. No special finish. So we have statue. At the end of the game, number of statues. So these look like end of game scoring cards. We are going to turn this off and this off. Because we're not trying to show off minis here. And try to get a little better. So statue. Yeah, these are all end of game. Pyramid decoration. At the end of the game, earn three points per three stones in your pyramid. Yours plus the others. So we have a whole ton of end game scoring cards. Nice thick deck. I'm going to guess these are probably hidden objectives, but who knows? Haven't read the rules again. Haven't played. So here we go. Nice big stack. End game scoring. And then we have another stack that shows a bunch of boats on them. No clue, having not played the game, but that's what all of these are. Looks like there's different numbers at the top. That's it. Those are all the components. So not a lot of components, but what I did see is impressive. Tons of cubes, cardboard boats to put the cubes on, and cardboard playing boards. It looks like the playing boards are A and B sided, so it looks like we got some replayability there. Again, I'm going to use one of these bags to put these cards because my one disappointment so far, silly box insert. It's pretty, but it's not functional unless I get to the rules and there's some reason that I need this shape. But I don't think so. Based on all the pictures I've seen of this game, I'm not using this box for anything. I don't need pretty insides in my boxes. Pretty outside, sure. Catch my attention. Do not need pretty insides. I would rather have functional. Hopefully the gameplay more than makes up for that. Uh, again, there's just two punch boards. It's not a lot. Mostly the boats and these tiles that are obviously going to make our city. We're just putting everything back here. And then we have some storehouses to store the tiles. And we're going to take a quick look at the rule book. So compared to the other games I unboxed today, this looks pretty simple. Uh, we're still looking at 11 pages. That is not too small. Uh, there is at a glance explanation of the market cards. So the market cards with those endgame scoring cards. There's a story laid out, list of the components. Again, no actual use for the silly box insert. Bunch of different boats, bunch of city tiles. Uh, black text on a light background, thank you. Course of play, place stones on your ships, prepare for the next round, end of game. So the rules literally are these two pages. That's it. They like said, it's supposed to be a, a, a lighter... Thinky filler, I think is a good term, a gateway game. So it does have strategy rank pretty high. And that's it. And then this is just an explanation of all the sites. So the A and the B sides of each site. So the actual gameplay rules are pretty simple. And then there's a variant. So B is a variant way to play. So there's a one two-page explanation of the A sides, then a two-page explanation of the B sides, and then there's a variant called the Wrath of the Pharaoh. And that's it. So there we have everything you get. In Imhotep, Builder of Egypt, I didn't see any creepy scarabs or any way to dislocate your jaw and scream really loud. Imhotep from Thame Cosmos, again, provided a review copy of that, so that is my unboxing of that. So, looks pretty cool. I'm excited to get to this to the table. I'm hoping to get it to the table soon in the next couple days. I'll definitely have that at our Windsor Extra Life event. Uh, so, for Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano. This has been uh, our one of our cardboard coat checks where we unboxed Imhotep from Cosmos. Uh, you can find more of my content at tabletopbellhop.com. If you watch uh, streams on Twitch, Wednesday nights we record our Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. Thursday we usually play online games with myself and my podcast co-host. And then Friday we try to stream Gloomhaven. Uh, you can also find a ton of videos on YouTube. 
and try to find the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast on your podcatcher. If you dig any of this content, it'd be awesome if you headed over to patreon.com forward slash tabletop bellhop and considered tipping the bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I'm Mo. Good night and game on.